What's going on? Welcome back to Real World Tool Reviews. Happy 4th of July. Uh, today is a day where a lot of people are going to drink a whole lot of these. Uh, mine's non-alcoholic, but uh, they're going to drink a whole lot of these. They're going to shoot off a bunch of fireworks and have a whole bunch of fun. And uh, that's good for them. I, however, don't do that type of thing anymore. I uh, I have been playing in my garden and doing yard work and messing around in my shop and now I'm making some tool videos. And that's the beauty of this great country is you can do whatever the hell you want. And uh, I love living in this great country, the United States of America, but we are not moving in the right direction. Tool wise, <laughs> we're just gonna keep it to the tools. I'm not gonna get super, super uh, controversial on my tool review uh, YouTube channel. But what I will say is that if we don't change our ways, we're going to run out of good quality U.S. made, uh, U.S. manufactured tools, and that makes me sad. And I just kind of had, I picked out some examples of some old USA made tools that I have found. And I just wanted to point out the quality of them and talk about them. And, uh, you know, maybe just spread the word about how great these things are and uh, encourage some of you, the viewers, to check them out for yourself. Or if you're already into them, buy more of them, support the people that are still making them. And uh, maybe we can get this thing turned around, you know. Uh, I love snap-on tools. I love vintage ones. And, like, these sockets here, uh, all three of these sockets I found just recently randomly at different yard sales or estate sales mostly. And when I see one of these, I can almost spot it without even picking it up to read the letters or anything. I can literally tell by the quality of the chrome and I can look at the at, at just the the design on the bottoms I mean I can I can spot one of these sockets in a bucket of junky sockets in a heartbeat because for some reason you know just just on the quality of the chrome I guess they don't rust like like all these uh, like a lot of those old sockets you you'll see a bucket full of sockets and there will be a snap on like this. I didn't clean these up at all. I did no restoration to them. Like the inside, you can see, is still real dirty. You know, if I would have cleaned them up, I would have cleaned up the insides. But, and I will do that eventually. <laughs> I've got a lot of sockets to clean up. But uh, you can you can just spot these because the quality is just obvious. And these old uh, these old cursive snap on uh, letters. They're they're old. They're pretty old. Now, I'm not sure how to date these. They do have, I think they might have date codes or something like S221 might mean something. Let us know in the comments if you know how to date snap-on sockets. But it's just amazing when you see a socket like this in a bucket full of other old tools, and you see this snap-on made in the USA. A lot of times, you know, you'll see a bunch of sockets that say Taiwan and China and stuff you know that's mostly what you see and then you'll be looking through and you'll find a snap-on socket and it'll just be like it'll stand out so obviously and uh, you know that's kind of just a theme of like you know same with this snap-on wrench like I found this little snap-on wrench a couple weeks ago or whatever I don't know how long it's been but found it recently and it was in a bucket full of wrenches that just looked like they were gonna keel over and die, <laughs> except for this one. And uh, I don't know, it's just great chrome, I guess. And then there's other tools like these uh, vice grips. It's just sad. You can't buy a pair. I mean, you can buy the Eagle grips, I think now, that are USA made uh, vice grips style pliers anyway. Vice grip is the brand, but the Everybody calls them vice grips, you know, kind of like channel locks. But these uh, Peterson, I mean, I've found a bunch of these recently. The ones that say DeWitt, Nebraska on them. This pair in particular looked like absolute garbage. Like, nobody would want this. 
So I got it basically for nothing. You know, you can get these things for a dollar or 50 cents or, you know, just throw it in with the rest of your stuff. You're basically getting it for free. They're all over the place. A lot of people had them back in the day. They're great tools, you know. Everybody knows a pair of vice grips can really come in handy. But they, uh, you know, they look terrible when you find them a lot of the times. But because of the quality of the coating of whatever they put on these things, I learned it from uh, Tom Gun Tools. He told, he, he, he talked about it in the videos that he makes about restoring these. And I heard him say, like, whatever they did with the coating on these makes it to where they clean up great. And he was right. They're just like, they're, they're beautiful. And they're worth saving. So if you can find them, you should definitely hold on to them. Here's a great example of just like, for some reason, these pliers just really make me happy to use. I don't know how old they are. I think they're probably old as hell. Um, they're Utica. And there's 513-7 USA. Maybe that means something to somebody who knows. That's There's a number five there too. Um, but these are some awesome slip joint pliers. They look terrible, terrible when I got them. I thought maybe I might just throw them away when I first got them, but I started looking and I was like, man, these are great. I started using them. Like I had one of these bottles and uh, I didn't have a bottle opener in here at the time, and I just kind of like opened it, opened these pliers up and just went and uh, popped the bottle off, the bottle cap off with it, and I was like, son of a bitch. I started looking at them, and then I cleaned them up, and you know, oiled them up, and they are just, I mean, I use them just about every day, and they're just, they're just some of my favorite they're just some of my favorite pliers now. They have really good teeth on them. Uh, really pretty good cutters for you know for that style of cutter. I love that they 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 uh, put that little cross on there. You know, back then they took the time to really do a lot of the extra little things to make something super super high quality and nice. Uh, there, these are just it's hard to describe unless you have a pair like this or or could hold them in your hand but they're just amazing unfortunately somebody made all these marks I couldn't get those out they're too deep but the the grips I mean this is just beautiful like there's just nothing better you know and uh, so these are that's just these are some of my favorites I've found recently uh, this wrench is it kind of the same as that Snap-on that's Williams? I don't think it's that old, actually. But it was sitting in this junky bucket full of tools, and it just, it was looking like this. Beautiful, shiny, amazing. And uh, the other ones weren't looking like that. And then this Crescent wrench, I mean, everybody loves the classic Crescent wrench. Uh, I fixed this one up, it was terrible when I got it but it's just so tight and so smooth and it's just it just screams quality when you're holding it and when you look at it <laughs> you know it's just like you can't find a lot of this stuff made now but you still can find some and uh oh here here's the same thing this screwdriver was just in a bucket full of shitty screwdrivers and I I looked at this it, this shaft looked just like this when I picked it up. And, I mean, it, this obviously was never used, pretty much, but, I mean, just, you just look at the, at the quality of this, of this flathead. It's just like, this is an Exolite. I love these. Uh, I actually have a whole set of these uh, nut drivers by them. This is my old... Exolite nut drivers. I've got a whole set of these, and I mean, just look how beautiful they are. I keep these clean. I do use them on the sh on the bench all the time, but I mean, I try to keep them clean because they're just kind of they're one of those things that I love because they just they just they just scream American quality, <laughs> you know. 
But uh, you can still buy stuff now that's made in the USA that's super high quality. And we need to support them because it's just, it's just, it's starting to go away and it's, it's really sad. Channel locks, you know, you can still get these things. Um, this is a fairly new pair of them. Channel lock 420s, they've been making them for years. They kind of laser etch now. They don't, they don't stamp it in like they used to, but they're still made in the USA. Beautiful. Um, Klein, everybody knows. Now these Kleins, I love them to death. I've abused the shit out of them. I've done things you never should do with pair of Kleins. I've cut screws. I've, I've pulled staples, cut staples. I've used them when I'm doing carpentry work, cutting nails. I've stuck them in between a door casing and a, and a, you know, uh, door frame, like rough in and, you know, just done stupid stuff with them. And they've held up. They're just, they're, they're awesome. Klein's, you know, that's, a, that's, Channel Lock and Klein are like two of the last, last ones standing. Um, Snap-on, everybody loves Snap-on. Actually, not everybody loves Snap-on. A lot of people hate Snap-on. They are very expensive and, you know, some of the things they do you might not agree with, but, I mean, this is one of those tools that could sit in one of those buckets forever and it would still look beautiful, you know. Somebody in 40 years will find it and be like, look at that. This Snap-on ratchet is just, I just love it. It's just one of my favorite things ever. For good reason. These needle nose pliers, they're they're great, you know. They uh these are like some of the the tools that you can buy now that this is maybe the closest type of thing you can find to the craftsmanship that went into something like this. Um so they and here's here's one, Wild Tools. Um Wild Tool USA. They they make a lot of great stuff. I have a lot of stuff that's made by them. They're a great company, Wild Tools. Um, so check them out. You know, I bought this pair of uh, channel lock fencing pliers when I wanted some when I was building my garden box. And I was like, you know, I started looking around and I was like, okay, these are thirty bucks. Um, I think maybe I paid even more than that because they weren't available at the, at the time through anywhere except eBay or something. I can't remember, but man, these uh, things are just awesome. And you can pay 20 for a Chinese pair of Crescent brand ones, or what, there's a few different brands that they have, but I paid the extra money to get the Made in the USA fencing pliers, and I've been happy with them. Haven't used them a whole lot. Pulled a few staples with them and beat on some staples, but they're they're great. And now I have a a real good pair forever. But you know, there's there's you can get you can get these, and uh, the, some of the things it's like these are I don't know maybe sixteen dollars or something or eighteen dollars for a pair of these. Or you can get a pair of these stupid Irwin ones, and they're like probably fifteen. Like you might, you might save a couple bucks on some Chinese channel locks, you know. Just get these, get the channel locks. But uh, if you want to, you want a pair of slip joint pliers now. Like I got these Klein ones, which are fake Kleins basically. They're they're Klein, but they just rebranded them. They're like made in Mexico, trash slip joints. I mean, this is just like, what a stupid thing. You just pick up something like this, and you hold the two in your hands, and there's just something about the way this feels, like just the weight of it. A lot of people probably know what I'm talking about. It's like you're holding it, and it's like, this just feels like a toy compared to this, you know? Or uh, like, holding these two things, it's just like, laughable. This is the new Crescent, you know? It's like, how do they even get away with calling them that? I mean, I don't know. They, they bought the name. Whatever. But this is just Chinese garbage. 
compared to this. And uh, it really is a shame because, you know, these are what all you can get now if you want to buy a brand new one in Home Depot or something, you know. Here's a, here's a pair of uh, DeWalt uh, linesman's pliers. It's just like, they just feel so chintzy when you're, I mean, just a little bit of extra effort that, like, when you look at the clines here on the left, you can see they the the contour or whatever of the handles is better. The the they're heavier. They're they're more. You know, there's 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 just more thought go that goes into them, and they're. It's hard to explain other than to say that these feel like you can really do something with them. And these feel like you need to buy a new pair of linesman's pliers, <laughs> you know? And that's kind of like the, the, the theme with these tools is I bought all these and immediately was like, why did I get this? Like, I've got to get something better. So I did. And uh, that's why I really try to just always find the best stuff. And I love getting this old stuff, you know? I love collecting these old sockets. I mean, just to have these is amazing. Now, Snap-on still makes sockets and wrenches. You know, they make everything. Snap-on is it's the best of the best for a lot of things. But I would highly suggest uh, going out and finding you some vintage stuff if you really want Snap-on sockets because holy... Damn, are they expensive. I mean, just the new Snap-on sockets are like crazy. But uh, another thing is, you know, a lot of these companies have like, the thing that scares me is stuff like this. Uh, Klein, made in Mexico. And Klein has other stuff that's made overseas. You know, these companies will slap their names on, on non-made in the USA stuff, you know. Snap-on will stick their name on somewhere it probably says made in China I know this lights made in China it's actually a really good light but um, they will snap their name <laughs> they will snap their name onto a fucking Chinese product in a heartbeat and if they'll do it on a light someday they might do it on a goddamn wrench and I don't want that to happen so Support the the, uh, the the companies that are making stuff in the USA and encourage them to keep making stuff in the USA. And uh, I think it will it will you know tools are a good uh, small subcategory for the bigger problem, which is that we depend on other countries for a lot of our resources these days, and that is one of the major roots of many problems in our society and uh, you know maybe think about that the next time you you know vote for somebody or or whatever that's all I'm gonna have to say about it you know I mean maybe the price of everything in this country wouldn't be so outrageous if we made more things in this country they talk about supply chain issues uh, the supply chain would be a whole lot less of a problem if we manufactured more things in the United States and uh, that's all I'm gonna have to say about that but USA made tools are some of the some of the coolest things in the world they're my favorite my favorite thing uh, to do really is to use tools I just I love it I love fixing stuff and when I you need tools to fix stuff and if you're gonna fix stuff get you some good quality stuff um, so anyway, happy 4th of July, and thanks for watching.